The content you're about to enjoy comes from the archives of The Best You. We're devoted to the very best in personal development, with a platform and resources dedicated to inspiring and changing people's lives. At The Best You, we work with the world's leading writers and trainers on the evolution of the self and people whose journeys have been affected by their work and words. These Best You Expo Talks are recorded in front of a live audience in a live event. We highly recommend that you focus on the message. As they say, what you focus on expands. Enjoy. David Hall, the title of his talk is Seller Size. David has a phenomenal experience when it comes down to exercise. And um, he asked, have we approached health and fitness all wrong? Is there a better way? Author, lecturer, trainer, inventor, and motivational speaker, David Hall promises to change your life in just 10 minutes a day. And he's done that for over 25 years. Because for over 25 years, Hall has taught a whole different methodology in physical fitness and health, and his 80,000 customers attest to his works. This may be the most important message you can hear. So enjoy. Thank you so much. hands together for David Hall. He's our last speaker of the first year in Long Beach of the 2018 Conscious You Expo. The best you ever, the best you expo. High five you, my friend. All right, this is all you. Oh, you got a microphone. You're good to go. All right, guys. Okay, guys, we are going to turn back the hands of time, and I guarantee that. We're also going to give people nearly superhuman strength and balance in just three minutes. I want to take a moment to... Uh, to thank Bernardo and, and Chris and Gail and all the talented people behind the scenes who have been working to make this program a success. Our objective is to help you reach your greater health potential. You have one. Most of us have bought into a current idea of what health is, which virtually is an absence of illness. If I were to draw, draw a line down the center of a piece of paper, and we say illness is on one side and health is on the other side, most people live right on the line. When they get a little sick, they take a pill or do what they need to to get back to the line and they're satisfied. We've got a huge health potential that goes way, way beyond that. I've got a prayer that I've often said and, and I wanna share it with you because it represents a little bit about me and how I got to where I am right now. But the prayer goes like this that God would guide and direct me in my world, activities, and affairs, the thoughts and the desires of my heart. Help me see things not as men do, but as you want me to. Help me to become the person that I need to be so that I can help lift up others toward their greater physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional health. That's been a dream of mine and a prayer of mine for many, many years. And for over 28 years, I've traveled all around the world in different parts of the country helping people reach their greater health potential. So I started a long time ago. And I'm in my 60s now. I do a, a 10 minute a day routine that literally, it literally does turn back the hands of time. Since we're all made up of cells, about 75 trillion of them, doesn't it stand to reason that if each one of your individual cells were stronger, healthier, and working more efficiently, that your body parts and functions would also be stronger, healthier, and working more efficiently? Does any of that make sense? What I'm gonna share with you right now is not science fiction, it's science fact, but this isn't the exercise of the past. I call it the exercise of the future, we just make it available today. This is exercise at the cellular level. Now we're all familiar with exercise at the muscular level, aren't we? We've been taught to buy into a, a methodology or an idea that we think in terms of the body as muscle groups and body parts. We're the only species in the world that does that. The fitness industry is dependent upon it. When they can get you to think in terms of muscle groups, muscle parts, all these various different functions, then they can create the wedges, abdominal boards, rowers, ski toners, port bike fitness, climbers, stair masters, health riders, Nordic track, twin air dynes, life cycle, life force, stomach crunch and thigh masters, ab blasters, solo flex, treadmill, cyclone, body gyms, total gyms, torso track, bow flex, gazelles, says, I mean, the list goes on and on. And as long as we buy, <laughs> Thank you. 
as long as we buy into that methodology of exercise, I can assure you every six months or so, the fitness industry is going to find another way of packaging another piece of exercise equipment just a little differently to motivate you to add to your ongoing collection, because frankly, that's how they make their money. And yet the principle upon which every piece of exercise is based is exactly the same. They all work by applying weight or stress to a certain part or function of the body over and over until that body part, function, or muscle adapts by becoming stronger. And all those muscles are made up of what? It's participatory meetings, so you can say it. Cells, that's right. So what if there was one exercise which instead of weight lifting, which limits the effect to the muscle doing the lifting, it was weight bearing, which was applying the weight on every single cell, every muscle all at the same time, strengthening all your muscles all at the same time. But it'll go well beyond that. Now you've got 75 trillion cells flexing over 100 times a minute. That can reduce body fat. According to Dr. Paul E. DeBoer, an MD who did the study, 11 times faster than walking, five times faster than swimming, and three times faster than running. Firm your legs, thighs, hips, and buttocks. Strengthen your arms, increase agility, improve balance, rhythm, timing, dexterity, hand-eye coordination. Provide an aerobic activity for your cardiovascular system and rejuvenate your body when you're tired. But it would go well beyond that. It's a program that's being featured now more and more and more in health magazines, books, and articles as being effective in helping to lower high blood pressure, helping to reverse hardening of the arteries, the number one degenerative disease, helping to lower elevated cholesterol and triglyceride levels. That stimulates the thyroid, the adrenals, and the endocrine system detoxifies the liver, improves kidney circulation, as well as digestion elimination processes, increases oxygen and blood flow to the brain, opens up capillaries, being used by a number of ophthalmologists today to help revitalize vision. But it goes well beyond that. It's the only program that I believe that can claim to be an isometric for toning the body from the inside out, not just from the outside in. I had a customer of mine put it beautifully. She said, David, as I was hitting midlife, I felt like everything was headed south. She said, now that I've been using your program, I feel like everything's headed north again. We'll talk about that. It's an isometric from the inside out. It's an isotonic, it's weight bearing, but it's not just on the muscles, it's on the muscles, the bones, the skin. How do you get a skin cell to do a push-up? I'm gonna show you. It's literally lifts, tightens until isotonic, calisthenic for targeting. I'm gonna show you techniques that I've developed over the last 20 years that target to strengthen the knees, the hips, the waist, the back, the buttocks, the shoulders, tightens underneath the chin, improves digestion, elimination processes, very, very important for good health. But it goes beyond that. It's an aerobic program for your entire cardiovascular, pulmonary, circulatory system, and it's a flexibility program without ever having to stretch. Best of all, a program that takes, and I know we've been doing it over 28 years, I wouldn't still be in business if it didn't work. 28 years, it's a program that takes only 10 minutes a day in the convenience of your own home at the office or while you're traveling, you don't have to change your clothes and you don't have to break out into a sweat in order to enjoy its benefits. Now, does all that sound too good to be true? Yeah, it would be if we were talking about the current methodology of exercise. By the way, we're the only species in the world <laughs> that has bought in to the current methodology of exercise. You're never gonna see a dog, cat, monkey, or any other species of animal out there pumping iron weights or doing the insane programs you see people do today on television. And yet they're very strong and they're very healthy. Nothing wrong with that, you can do it. But there's another way. In fact, when I was doing my business plan, they asked me, they said, David, who's your target audience? I thought about it and looked back and I said, people. And they laughed and they said, no, 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 you can't be that broad, you gotta narrow your audience. I said, no, you need to broaden yours. Let me tell you why. If you could look at your blood in the microscope when you first wake up in the morning with most people today as a result of the acidic diet that we eat and the processed foods we eat, the blood cells become sticky. You can see it under a microscope. When they're sticky, they're not in a very good healthy state. They don't circulate very well. So this is a program that literally in three to five minutes separates your blood cells, energizes them. They have a sodium potassium pump. They're positively and negatively charged like a battery. They generate a field of energy around them that separates them so that they can circulate through the entire body. This is a program that I've been teaching to, um, oh, I've got a, I didn't take those out. I wanna share some of the stories with some of the people that we've worked with that, um, that have gotten some of these results. I was hoping to have a table up here, but this will work. All right, this lady here began in her 
Well, she heard me on the radio. She started to do my program, and three and a half months later, she calls up the Seattle Times newspaper and says, you've got to get this information out to the public. Seattle Times had no idea what she was talking about. They'd never heard of my program, but they asked her, how old are you? Ruth Mary says, I'm 94. They said, where do you live? So they went and featured her, put her on the front cover of Section E of the Seattle Times newspaper telling her story. She sends me a copy of the article with a letter saying that this really saved her life and goes on to say, to say that since the printing of the article, the Seattle Times had more requests for copies and duplications of the article than of any other article they'd ever printed. I want to share some of these because most all of us know somebody that has weight issues, digestion elimination issues, back problems, uh, cellulite, um, headaches, multiple sclerosis, um, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, diabetes. The, the stories that we get, when you have stronger, healthier cells, your body parts and functions are going to be stronger and healthier. I'd like to share some of these with you. This is a gentleman. His name is Robert Gent. And when I met Robert, he'd been a semi-professional athlete in the 70s. This is his letterhead. He lists all of his various different awards that he'd won. And he was very proud of him. But when I met him, his knees were shot. His back was a mess. He couldn't, he couldn't uh, compete anymore. He was a little depressed. And I said, what have you done to restructure and strengthen the supporting muscles and ligaments around your joints? He looked at me like, what? I said, well, if you have knee problems, hip problems, back problems, shoulder problems, generally it's because of either weaknesses or injuries in the supporting muscles and ligaments around the joint. When we address the cause of the problem, and we address the supporting muscles and ligaments, and we work on those, very often the problem just disappears. So we spent a couple hours together, and, and he took my program to heart and started to do it. Three and a half months later, he goes out for the Senior Games Pentathlon, wins first place in all of North America, considered the best on the continent, and his six easy leg press is 880 pounds, and says, Coach, leg press is 885 pounds, and he sends me a, a letter handwritten letter. And in the letter, it says, David, it has been miraculous, the positive influence that your program has had on my body. I've tried every strength, plotty, stretching routine available. Nothing like your program has helped me to get my, my muscle and joint health back. He says, Helen, his wife, Helen and I are sold on what you created. That's just one. Guys, I could spend the whole rest of the evening just telling you these stories, and they are absolutely amazing. Um, lady here, Thanks to the cellar sizer, here's what you're going to hear about. <laughs> I have more energy. I sleep better. I feel alive and well. I used to have some problems with digestion, but almost forgot about it because I haven't had any problems in several months. Couldn't figure out why my blood test was showing that I needed to change the thyroid medication, but the doctor insisted that I reduce it anyway. Then I read your list of benefits of cellar size that increased thyroid output, and that's one of the benefits. She says, amazing. Um, we've got so many, and we don't have to... I, Oh, osteoporosis, osteopenia. The doctor said that couldn't happen. More than one testimonial concerning it. And I, again, I share this because you all you know people that... Uh, <laughs> Ruth Mary McDowell, that's the one I shared with you earlier, 94-year-old. Not to be beat by her, lady here at 95 started doing it a few months later. She sends me a, um, a picture of her doing jumping jacks. But there's, here's a great one. Lady who worked for UPS. And when she was, I'll just read it. It says, thank you, David, all capitalized exclamation points. A valve in my heart went bad and I was seeing a cardiologist. I had to have several tests done as the valve worsened. A nuclear test was performed and I was at 52%. I was so weak and achy. It was very hard to do my job at UPS, unloading trucks and working. But one day a gentleman picked up a package and inspected it at my office. It was one of your units. I was so impressed that I got one too. I used it to save my life, and I certainly did not want to have open heart surgery to replace my valve. Didn't have time for that. I am blessed and happy to say after using your program for several months, another nuclear test was performed. I was at 70% exclamation points. My cardiologist asked what I was doing. Using your program was the only thing I was doing differently. She said 70 was the low end of normal range, and I didn't need surgery anymore. I've continued to use your program because if I stop, I do find my heart weakens again along with several other symptoms of poor health. Now, remember I was talking about sticky blood? When you use the cellar sizer, it breaks the blood cells apart so they can circulate more freely through the capillaries and makes it easier on the heart. Fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, I'll, I'll end with this one. We could go on and on and on. I've got hundreds of these. 
bottom line, I don't know what your situation is, what your goal is, or what you want to do for your own physical health. But if I don't answer it, I want you to ask me the question at the end of the program, because I'd like to. And like I said, I've been doing this 28 years. I work with doctors, health practitioners, hospitals, physical trainers, sports enthusiasts, celebrities all over the country. This lady here heard me on the radio talk about the, the fact that cells don't get old. They're always replacing themselves. In fact, can I see a show of hands? Is there anybody here over seven years old? Okay, listen carefully to the question. It's a trick question. Is there anybody here over seven years old? Cells don't get old. They're always replacing themselves. But cells get weak. Some parts of our body are renewing themselves every seven years. Some parts several times over that. Cells get weak. When cells get weak, body parts and functions get weak. The good news is we can strengthen and improve the efficiency of our cells at any age. When we strengthen and improve the efficiency of our cells, again, we strengthen and improve the efficiency of our body parts and their functions. So this lady uh, hears me on the radio, calls me and says, can I use your program? I say, can you walk? And she says, no, not really. I'm bedridden. I'm on IVs. I'm on Vitacaine, Lidocaine, Laetrile, Morphine, um, Imitrex, <laughs> all kinds of various different um, drugs. She'd been suffering migraine headaches since 1958. They were debilitating. She'd had 46 days straight of migraine headaches, another 64 days straight of migraine headaches. She didn't really care to live her anymore. The doctors couldn't give her any more medications because her body functions were starting to shut down. I said, you're welcome to try it. Um, for 30 days. If it works for you, great. If not, go ahead and return it. So she gets the program. She starts to use it. I didn't hear back from her for 30 days. 60 days go by, 90 days go by, and I get a two-page handwritten letter from her. Now, she had also told me that she had a tremor disease. She couldn't even hold a glass of water steady. So she goes on in the letter telling me about her story. At the very end, she says that for the first time since 1958, she says, I'm totally migraine-free. I'm off all pain medication. The tremor disease is gone. For the first time in four years, I'm able to paint again. She says, since having such great results physically, I'm feeling so much better mentally. First, I give thanks to the Lord and thank him for you, your work, Dave, and your development of the, your program. How much pleasure and satisfaction you must receive from your work. Thank you so much. It's given me a whole new lease on life. It goes on and on and on and on. A basic understanding of how all exercise affects the body will help us to better understand a program which we call Cellar size. If I were to lie down and do push-ups, what is the force that I have to push away from to lift my body up? Gravity. Okay, if I'm doing leg lifts, I have to oppose gravity. Pull-ups, sit-ups, same thing. We can apply the concept of the accepted aerobic activities of walking, jogging, and running. If I take my center of balance, which is right about here, it used to be right about here, that's another story. But as I move my center of balance forward, I feel the force of gravity pulling down on me, causing me to take a step. We can apply the concept of weightlifting. Weightlifting is simply taking a mass of something and moving it away from gravity over and over. Now, as far as the body is concerned, do you think it really cares how sophisticated the equipment is? It doesn't matter whether it's connected with pulleys, fulcrums, wheels, arms, cables, chains, rubber bands. At the end of the cable, the chain of the rubber band, you still have the weight or the resistance. And it is simply the weight or resistance on the cells over and over that cause the muscles to get bigger and stronger. Swimming is a great exercise, except for the chlorine. That kills you, it just does a little bit at a time. But still, what is it that pulls down on the water molecules, creating the density necessary to allow us to move through the water? It's gravity. So you see, the common denominator then of all exercise is opposing the gravitational pull of the Earth or creating some sort of a resistance. If that's the case, and all I need to do to become stronger is to learn how to stand heavier. Right? Like this. Well, not exactly. But I am going to show you a way you can stand heavier over 100 times a minute. The key to cellar size was given to us as early as 1911 by Albert Einstein. He observed that the human body cannot tell the difference between the forces of acceleration, deceleration, and gravity to the body. It's simply weight. Well, we have a working knowledge of gravity, so let's consider a moment the forces of acceleration and deceleration. And let's admit these forces exist. And they have the same effect on virtually anybody because we're all made up of cells and they pretty much adapt the same way when challenged. Anybody here have a sports car? No? Yeah? No? What do you have? What is it? I couldn't hear. 
Corolla Sport, does it go pretty good? When, when you hit that accelerator, can you feel the weight of acceleration pushing your body back? Yep, okay, that's weight on the body. Okay, when you come around the corner and you see the car in front of you, you hit the brake or the decelerate, you're gonna feel the weight of deceleration pushing your body forward into the seat belt. Now, those forces are very obvious, but for whatever reason, the fitness industry has never really harnessed them before. The only thing I can figure out it is probably due to the fact we generally experience the forces of acceleration and deceleration horizontally, don't we? Most of us are not gonna be going around town hitting the brake and the gas over and over to create these weight-bearing activities. We generally experience the force of gravity vertically. What if we could line the forces of acceleration and deceleration up with gravity and combine three forces working on the body, not just one? We'd have a whole different methodology of exercise. All we would need is a piece of equipment that would allow us to harness those forces. And guess what? I've got one. It came with me on the plane. <laughs> we call it, I call it my portable gym. Notice it is, it is extremely portable. Um, somebody literally asked me once, what can I put in the glove compartment of my car? I did a double take. I think he meant the trunk. I said, I don't know, how big's your car? <laughs> but you can fit under a bed, behind the door. Um, I used to take this, this unit here is 14 years old. We've got the newer ones that we're gonna be bringing up in a moment. But this is my personal unit. And even though it's been around the world a lot, um, it just got on, it was on a cruise last weekend, or last week, <laughs> it, um, it holds up. I designed these to hold up. It's got a unique history to it. When I entered, has everybody heard of Rebounders? Mini trampolines, okay. When I entered the industry, rebounders were kind of, they were out there, they weren't doing anything and they weren't representative of NASA's research whatsoever anyway. But that led me to, on a path of discovery as far as NASA's research to create a program or a unit that would represent the research that they had done. That's what this is. This is solar sizer. Notice is it extremely portable. To open it, it's real simple, you just, lay it on the ground, pop it open. Literally in less time than it takes me to put on a pair of running shoes, I'm ready to begin cellar sizing. Now, many people mistakenly believe they can find something like this on a Sears, Kmart, or a sporting goods store. Unfortunately, nothing could be further from the truth, and it is important you understand why. Number one, when I began in the industry, virtually every mini trampoline on the market was using these. These little tube springs will stretch only a little bit. They don't decelerate and accelerate, they just stop abruptly. The abrupt jarring effect at the bottom of the stretch was so severe it often broke the spring or damaged the person using it. My dad was permanently disabled within one month of attempting to do my exercises on a unit that used these kind of springs. In the early 90s, I introduced a tapered spring design. It was a barrel-shaped spring. It had a larger diameter in the middle and it gradually tapered on both ends, allowing the body to decelerate and accelerate but without jar. Well, no sooner had I done that than everybody else starts coming out with tapered springs. The problem was in the quality of the spring. If the spring is too weak and you stand on it, all you do is sink. It doesn't have lift. You're not getting the pumping action of the lift. You're not opening up the lymphatic system or the circulatory system or creating a weight-bearing exercise. So I had to change the design and we created, it's called a triflex spring design. It actually has a larger diameter in the middle with the ridge where it tapers and then another ridge where it tapers again. The ridge focuses the weight toward the center of the spring, which is where most of us will use it. If we weigh more or we're jumping higher, it will graduate to the next ridge, the next tier, and so forth, so it always decelerates you, but without ever coming to an abrupt stop or jar. So it doesn't matter whether you're 10 pounds or 300 pounds. It's the only self-adapting spring of its kind on the market. If you're interested in speaking, exhibiting, or getting involved in the largest personal development expos in the world, contact us today at www.thebestyouexpo.com or send us an email to info at thebestyou.co. So then they came out with bungee cords. I don't know if you've heard of bungee cords. Bungee cords are rubber bands. Rubber bands warm up. When they warm up, they become very weak and they become sluggish and your feet pronate. And when your feet pronate, at least ankle problems, knee problems, and lower back problems. So we use steel springs. When they came out with trampolines early in the very beginning, they used bungee cords until they came out with steel springs and they went with steel springs, they never went back to bungee cords. Okay, so these are the steel springs, the steel in our spring are so strong it destroys conventional spring molds. So we had to do a tungsten steel mold just to be able to produce our spring, but that's where we're gonna get the support that we need 
in the different movements. This matte material, it is not made out of the canvas, nylon, or plastics, like you can find in typical rebound or mini trampolines. Canvas, nylon, and plastic mats stretch rotten mildew. When the material stretches, your feet sink. They pronate. That leads to ankle problems, knee problems, lower back problems. This is a po- I, I need to share this with you because I love this industry, and I want you to be informed so you can make whatever decision you want, but that, at least you have enough information. This matte material is a polypropylene made here in the United States. Every fiber is put under nearly 200 tons of pressure. Leave it out in the sun, the rain, the snow, it doesn't matter. It's all weather resistant, but it won't stretch out. It'll support you. The springs connect, do not connect directly to the frame. We never wear the frame out. We drill 36 holes through the frame, put steel pins through the holes, connect the springs to the pins. The frame will last virtually forever. I've got customers that have been using their units for well over 20 years now. The legs don't screw on because anything that screws on can get stripped, stuck, or lost. These sit over a steel post, held in place by heavy-duty piano wire. Even the rubber tips aren't rubber. These are all, everything's original here other than the spring cover. I changed that out once, but the, the rubber tips are polymer. They don't wear down. We've never worn one out. Okay, I'm ready to demonstrate cellar size. I just need to change into my cellar size outfit. So if you'll pardon me for a moment. Okay, we thought about designer socks, but you really don't need anything fancy. Oh, and competition doesn't like us. They keep telling us how noisy our unit is, how squeaky it is. We even have words of of one company that put oil or uh, lemon juice on both ends of each spring (laughs) to make it squeaky and put a mic underneath it to say, look, and that's what we have to deal with out on the website. But I want you to listen how noisy this is. Ready? You know, I, 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 yeah. it's still rubbing against steel. I put a drop of oil at both ends of each spring once a year, and it's fine. It's quiet. Okay, as I stand here, I weigh approximately 160 pounds, or 1G. That's the weight of gravity. But as I start to bounce just this high, a remarkable thing happens. I no longer weigh 160 pounds at the bottom of the bounce. I now weigh closer to 200 pounds, or 1.25 Gs. Now, we can measure that with a G meter. Does everybody here know what a G-meter is? Many of you may have one in your own home. You get up in the morning, walk into the bathroom, step on it, look down at the needle, and some people even call it by name. (laughs) Oh, G. Okay. That's a G-meter. It measures Gs or the weight of gravity. If I were to take that G-meter or bathroom scale, put it on the cellar sizer, and jump up and down on it, what would happen to the needle on the scale? Yeah. It would fluctuate, <laughs> registering the, the greatest amount of weight at the bottom of the bounce. Well, we know that 160 pounds comes simply from the weight of gravity. Where does the other 25% of additional weight that I am putting on my body coming from? Remember the forces? Acceleration and deceleration. See, as I jump up and come down, I load the springs. That's known as the force of deceleration. The loaded springs and push me back up. That's known as the force of acceleration. Whenever you add the forces of acceleration and deceleration on the same vertical plane as gravity, you end up creating an entirely new G-force that all the cells of your body are constantly being exposed to. So the question then becomes, what happens to the cells of your body when you alter or change the G-force? Part of that was illustrated very nicely by NASA, who discovered that when the astronauts are in outer space for two weeks, they can lose up to 15% of their bone and muscle mass simply because the cells do not, have the weight, do not have the weight of gravity to contend with. They're weightless. When they're up there for two to three or more months, they're not even allowed to stand up. They're helped out with a stretcher because the body atrophies in weightlessness. Well, NASA had to find a weight-bearing exercise, not a weight-lifting exercise. They had to find a way to strengthen the entire body, not just parts of the body. It was their research that was published in the Journal of Applied Physiology back in uh, 1980 that demonstrated what the G-forces of trampolines could do on the body as a weight-bearing exercise. Trampolines were not very safe, so now they, they can use uh, the centrifuges. We can't afford those. But we took the research that they had done, applied it in a way so that we could create a weight-bearing exercise that had a a huge amount of additional benefits, and we're going to talk about that. Doctors know bones and muscles heal faster and grow strong when exposed to some stress. That's the idea behind the walking cast. Well, as I start to move up and down just this high, how many cells in my body are moving up and down with me? I hope so. (laughs) 
If we were to ask any physical therapist, what is the formula for strength? They're gonna say it's stress times repetition. You stress a certain part or function of the body over and over until it adapts by becoming stronger. Well, since I'm moving up and down and I'm putting all this additional weight on my body over 100 times a minute, what are the cells gonna to have to do to compensate for the increased amount of weight? What are they gonna do? They're gonna to have to get stronger, aren't they? Tell me, do they have a choice? <laughs> Isn't that exciting? I've got one of two options. As I move up and down, I'm gonna get shorter and shorter. I won't. My body's gonna to have to get stronger and stronger, but that's from the inside out. The physiological implications of the G-forces created on the body, the pumping action as you're moving up and down through the lymphatic and circulatory system, how it stimulates internal organs and function, challenges proprioceptors and brain activity, up to 90% of brain activity. It would take hours to go through it all. We don't have time for that. I wish we did have more time because I would love to share more of it with you. But what I would like to do is share with you a few of the basic exercises that we can all benefit from right away. The first is what I call cell aerobics. Nothing magic about the term aerobics. It simply means all the cells of your body need oxygen in order to convert nutrients into energy. They receive the oxygen from the oxygen delivery system. It's made up of your heart, lungs, arteries, capillaries, and veins. So an aerobic exercise is virtually any activity that stimulates the system to more efficient oxygen delivery. Well, most of us know that walking is as good an aerobic exercise. It just takes longer. So with that in mind, would this qualify as an aerobic exercise? You bet. Notice the hips are allowed to drop down into the mat, which helps to loosen up the lower lumbar, the lower back area. How about this? Does this qualify? So even if I were blind, I could get all the exercise I needed without running into anything or anybody. And if you wanted to train for a special athletic event, there's nothing to stop you from doing this. You do that for a few minutes, you're going to have steam coming out of your eyeballs. <laughs> it's a vigorous or awake activity but I left a few things out. Barking, biting dogs, rain puddles, potholes, carbon monoxide poisoning, curves, mailboxes, and rollerbladers that jump out of nowhere. A study conducted by the University of Utah concluded that trampolining helped to eliminate as much as seven-eighths of the ballistic impact to your skeletal system compared to running on a hard surface. So we've also helped to reduce or eliminate the concerns of ankle problems, knee problems, shin splints, and lower back problems. And we've replaced some of the negatives of aerobic activity with some of the more comfortable elements, such as being at home with the family. We leave ours, ours in the uh, living room where the TV is, with the air conditioning on, or the heater, or lock on the door for safety and privacy. And notice, one size fits all feet. So if you're not using it, your spouse can. If they're not, your children can. If they're not, grandma and grandpa can. How many people need aerobic activity in their lives? How many need, people need the ballistic impact or jar of hitting a hard surface? Dr. J.E. Schmidt was quoted, member of the American Medical Association, was quoted as saying, jogging can kill you. It's a cumulative. In fact, they say Accumulatively, it's going to take far more out of you than it's ever going to give you in return. So if you like to jog, jog. Cellar size first, because it helps to increase circulation between the bones and joints, and then do it again afterwards. Okay, the next exercise is um, what I call the, the strength exercise. We're building up muscle mass and bone density. Do we have any um, massage therapists in here? No? Yes? No? Hmm. Okay. Um, how about physical therapists? No? All right. Doctors? <laughs> Any doctors? Okay. Um, bodybuilders? <laughs> A nurse, are you? Oh, entrepreneur. You're all entrepreneurs. Good. <laughs> Good. All right. There's nothing wrong with that. That's great. So am I. Um, if you were to look at the muscle on a dog or a cat, when they're relaxed, their muscles are extremely soft and pliable. You can almost push into their bone. But when you look at a person who has torn down the buildup or done the conventional form of exercise and you feel their muscles that are hard, 
fact, you're te- when you're tearing them down, they tell you to do it every other day because the body literally has to heal itself. I don't do weightlifting, and if I did, it would be a dead giveaway because when you feel my muscles, they'd be hard. But, and I've had thousands of people feel them. But when you feel my muscles, you see that? It's like, where's the muscle? It's weird. It really is. But that's like a dog or a cat until I flex it, and then it's very hard. That's the kind of muscle you get with solar size. It goes far beyond that. I mentioned earlier, we're going to give some people nearly superhuman strength and balance at the end of this program. That's literal. Okay, and you, can't, you can only do it on a cellular size. There's no other modality because nothing else is weight bearing on the fascia and the connective tissues the way that cellular size is. All right, so we've already determined that cellular size is a weight bearing exercise. So if I wanted to build up the muscle mass and bone density while cellular sizing, if I wanted to increase the weight so they get bigger and stronger, how could I do it cellular sizing? Yeah, what was that? Dumbbells. dumbbells. You can. Um, the problem with dumbbells, I tried that once. Oh, gee. Um, is that five pounds isn't five pounds when you're bouncing with it. It's a lot more, and it can hurt ligaments and tendons. And, but it, some people, you can. It's just you have to be real careful with that. What's an easier way? Move your arms. Yep. In fact, one of the techniques that I teach is uh, isometric, what I call one, two, three, four, two, or two, three, four, and I'll do that up to 20. And that's isometric with an isotonic. That's how I build up my arms. So you're never tearing them down. But another way is, as I'm on a cellular side, I just simply jump higher. See, the higher I jump, the faster I come down. The faster I come down, the more I load the springs. The more I load the springs, the greater the force of deceleration, the greater the force of deceleration, the greater the force of acceleration. You add the increased deceleration with the increased acceleration, all at the bottom of the bounce, you have a whole new G-force. I'm not going to repeat that, but suffice it to say, <laughs> thank you. At that height, I weigh nearly two Gs. That's twice the gravitational pull of the Earth. That means every cell is going to have to start to adapt by becoming that much stronger. Otherwise, I'd eventually get that much shorter. You get the general idea. Okay, I've been saving the best for last. It's great to have strong muscles. It's wonderful to have endurance, but I think you'll all agree with me, it's most important we have our health, isn't it? When we have our health, we can pursue our wealth, and we can enjoy it. But when we lose our health, we'll expense our wealth trying to get our health back again. And we've known many people, I'm sure, that have been in that position. That's what makes what I'm about to share with you right now, I think the most important physical activity every, everybody can do on a day-to-day basis when they first wake up in the morning. And I learned about it through my child. Actually, I was on a cellar sizer one day, and my, my um, daughter, several years ago, she's 28 already, um, she was standing in her um, playpen, holding on to the playpen. I'm bouncing up and down on the cellar sizer. So guess what she started doing? She started bouncing. And I began to think, that's universal among children all around the world. Are are kids born with balance? Anybody here born with balance? Think balance has something to do with age? No, we bought into that. I had a lady, true story, I'm in my office. She calls me up one day. She'd been on the cellar size of three and a half weeks. She calls me up to brag. She says, Mr. Hall, I just called to let you know. I was on top of my rooftop yesterday repairing my own shingles, and you should have seen the neighbors. She's 91 years of age. I'm not advocating it. I'm just saying that balance, we can improve it at any age when we start to challenge and stimulate it again, and we, we literally can. But that's, um, that's one. Hardening of the arteries, the number one degenerative disease. When the blood cells, when we go day to day with sticky blood cells, and we live a horizontal existence all day long, gravity's always pulling down, internal organs get weak, connective tissues get weak, everything starts to fall, because we're not bouncing up and down. You know, children, they bounce up and down in the crib, right? They get out of the crib, they graduate, now what do they jump on? Yeah, the couch or the bed. And what do we do? Yeah, we, I tell people we knew better, not only would we encourage them to do it, we'd be up there doing it with them. But balance, rhythm, timing, dexterity, hand-eye coordination, those are physiological functions. 
and we can lose them at any age. So that movement up and down, we kick children off the couch of the bed, they begin to dance. If you look at how young people dance, they're bouncing off the walls, let alone the ground, all the time. But we get to a certain age and we stop bouncing up and down. We begin to live this horizontal existence. And we do it day after day, year after year, with gravity always pulling down. By the time we hit our mid-30s, everything that used to sit up here now sits down here. I'm not a bodybuilder. I'm not, you know, I'm, I do my 10-minute-a-day routine. But for a guy who's, I'm going to be 62 this year. I can't believe it. But for a 62-year-old, it's not bad for a 60 Yeah, thanks, you know. <laughs> it's been that way for over 20 years. I just do my 10-minute-a-day routine. I'll, I'll show you how we do it in just a moment. But that, um, that movement up and down is vitally important. Hardening of the arteries. Can anybody see? There's a vein right there. I don't know if you can see it or not. Um, if I flex my arm, the vein just sits there. It doesn't do anything. If I hit it, it doesn't do anything. If I walk around, it doesn't do it. It just sits there. The moment I get on a cellar sizer and I start to move up and down, can you see that pumping? Yeah. The movement up and down is back flushing the valves. It's opening up the capillaries. It's opening up circulation. It's separating the blood cells so they can free, flow more freely through the body. As we get older and those capillaries shrink, body functions get weaker. We think it's part of the symptoms of the aging process. And we buy into that. Cells don't get old. We may go through an aging process, but a great majority of the symptoms of the aging process are simply weaknesses in the body and we can We've got a much greater health potential. We can avoid that. And that's according to Dr. Morton Walker, who actually said, we can avoid the symptoms of the aging process. And I agree with him. All right. So another reason that's so vitally important has to do with the immune system. The immune system keeps us, keeps us alive and healthy. It is also a circulatory system that works through your entire body. But it's a system of tubes that rather than carry blood, it carries lymphatic fluid, basically water, away from tissue spaces of the body and back into the bloodstream. These lymphatic tubes begin at the lymphatic terminals. They're located in the toes, the fingertips, and other extremities of the body, and they work their way up to other small lymph vessels towards the lymph nodes, kind of like the branches of an oak tree working their way backwards. Well, they move to the lymph nodes where the lymphatic fluid is cleaned. That's where your greatest concentration of your civil defense is located, all your white blood cells. And then larger lymph vessels carry the lymphatic fluid back up toward what's called the thoracic duct, your trunk of the tree, if you will, in through the venous cava area, through what's called the subclavian left vein, the roots, and then back in the bloodstream. There's nearly three times as much lymphatic fluid in your body as there is blood. So virtually all the cells of your body are surrounded by it. When the lymphatic system is circulating properly, it has the ability to flush or suck out the toxins, poisons, metabolic waste that accumulate within the body, which lead to stress, distress, breakdown in communication, poor health, pre-aging, degenerative diseases, even death. Everybody here know what a lymphocyte is? Everybody know who Captain America is? Okay, well, your lymphocytes are kind of like your Captain Americas. The representative of the 1% of the cells of your body devoted to your civil defense. They are devoted to keeping you alive and healthy. The lymphocytes utilize the lymphatic system to move throughout the body, seeking out and destroying viruses, germs, bacteria, fungus, dead cells, mutant cells, cancerous cells, and other foreign invaders. Dr. Arthur C. Guyton, in his book, Medical Physiology, points out that if the lymphatic system were to stop circulating for just 24 hours, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> That means if the lymphatic system is not circulating as well as it needs to be, given our current environment and conditions we're being exposed to, we're going to be more prone to what? Disease and illness. And according to a number of lymphologists and doctors, if the lymphatic system were circulating as well as it potentially can, a lot of potential there, it would be almost impossible to get sick. Well, I think we can all agree it's good. It's very important that we have good lymphatic circulation. I was in California one year, and the term lymphatic pump came up, and I thought, that's an interesting thought. If the lymphatic system needs to be circulating very effectively for us to be strong and healthy, I want to know where that pump is. Can anybody show me? Lymphatic system. Unlike your cardiopulmonary circulatory system, it doesn't have a heart to keep it circulating. It is dependent upon pressure changes occurring within the body to cause those one-way valves to start sucking that fluid out or fluid 
through the bones, the joints, and tissues based on the body. Those pressure changes occur somewhat through breathing, movement, not as effectively, but, but there is some movement there. When you get on a cellar sizer and you start to move up and down, millions of those one, waves are, one wave valves are opening and shutting. Within about three to five minutes, you create a circuit of movement with millions of one-way valves vacuuming out the internal environment of your body, pulling it into the lymph nodes and into the, the lymphatic system so the body can deal with those foreign invaders. According to Dr. Arthur C. Guyton, if you get on a cellar sizer and you run as fast as you can for one minute, you'll increase the number of active white blood cells in your body by 10 to 15 times, and they'll stay there for up to one hour. That's like every morning giving yourself your own natural antibiotic. Okay, so here's my routine. I get on the cellar sizer every morning, and the first movement, this is a wake-up call. This is a warm-up. You know, people that stretch and do some of these different movements for, uh, for athletics and sports and whatnot, they end up tearing or pulling their muscles because they're cold. This warms them up, literally takes the cell membrane and helps massage it so it becomes more flexible. So two to three minutes of this activates the lymphatic system. When you lay down at night to go to sleep, the fluid, a lot of it goes to your head. And you might wake up and your eyes are a little puffy and you, you, know, you get, get moving for the day. I get on the cellar sizer within three to five minutes, all the puffiness around the eyes is gone because the vacuum system is pulling the circulation and moving it through the whole body. So two to three minutes is my wake-up call. Then I do my aerobic exercise. Um, everybody's different. I, what I do, it's not the amount of time that matters to a cell. Cells don't have watches. <laughs> it's how you challenge the cells within the amount of time that causes them to adapt. So when I, I do my aerobics, it's a little more intense, but I, I count to 100 and I go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I go all the way up to 100 and I'm done. That's my aerobic activity. Then I do my calisthenics. Now, when I began, I had a, um, a little double chin. I had a little stomach. I was an average looking insurance agent at the time. And I wanted to get in better shape. We have a balance bar that attaches to the unit now. And if we can get, we've got a couple units in the back. If we can bring them up, I don't know if anybody back there can hear me, but I'd love to get those units up here. Um, you can hold on to the balance bar. If I tilt backwards, thank you. If I tilt backwards, I'm going to leverage the weight. See, with a sit-up, you move your body weight against gravity, right? And you limit the effect only to a very small group of muscles right there in the stomach. But when you cellar size, you tilt. All the muscles are tight all the way down the stomach wall. Holding on to the balance bar, I can either jog at an angle, or I can leverage more weight and kick my legs out, and this is the way I do it. So every day, one, two, three. Oh, you guys are great. All right, because we're going to... Having promoted more than 600 speakers and more than 65,000 people attend my seminars and courses and workshops and expos, having read so many books and attended so many courses, I really realize that the basics of personal professional growth is based on the power of the question, asking yourself empowering questions. Read my new book, The Question, Find Your True Purpose. It's based on my work, 30 years of entrepreneurship, all the experiences that I have, my manifesto, and what's really important. So for more information, go to www.thequestion.co. And we'll get some people up here in just a moment. All right, so that's the stomach. If you want to tighten underneath the chin, you take your 15, 20 pound head, and as you're doing this, you tilt backwards. Now all the muscles around the neck have to flex to hold the head up. Anybody have love handles? Anybody love them? What do they call them that for? That was the hardest thing for me to figure out. Holding on to the balance bar, you can kick out side to side, just like this. Every time I come down, I'm leveraging the weight right here. That's a lot more intense than just doing this. That's thinking in terms of body parts, right? When I kick out side to side, how many other cells or muscles of my body are being exposed to weight? That's what makes it so efficient. You're not limiting the effect. To strengthen the lower back and the buttocks, this helps lift, tighten, and tone the whole backside 
You can hold on to that balance bar. Kick your legs out behind you, just like this. Every time I come down, I'm leveraging the weight right there. Having a balance bar to hold on to makes it easier because you can lean forward a little bit more without worrying about falling off so you get faster results. So that's the lower back and the buttocks. Digestion elimination, those are called the smooth muscles. They are critical for our good health. And every day I put my colon and my intestines through a little washing machine. Real simple. Standing on the cellar this is the second most important activity I teach. We bend to the knees slightly, lift the heels up and down and do the twist. As I'm twisting, I'm literally massaging all these internal organs, the liver, the kidney, the spleen, the gallbladder, the pancreas, the adrenals, they're all going like this and up and down. And it helps to improve digestion elimination processes as well. Um, it also loosens the lower back. You see people do things like this all the time for the upper back, but 80% of Americans are totally gonna have problems with the lower back. So this gentle twisting motion helps to loosen up the lower back. I also teach in my DVD, additional movements that are designed to open up the vertebrae, increase circulation to the disc. The doctors call it imbibition, imbibing the disc with circulation. Most people lose natural circulation to the disc by the time they're 19, 20 years old. Unless they're doing movement, the disc is like a sponge. When a sponge doesn't get water, what does it do? It dries out, it shrinks. That's what happens between the vertebrae. As it shrinks, we get more pressure on the nerves less flexibility in the back. So the objective is, how do we open up the vertebrae? Well, when you increase circulation to the disc, or like a sponge getting water, it's called imbibition or imbibing the disc with synovial fluid. So there's movements that I teach where you take your elbow up, for example, and tilt to open up the back. You go to the point where you feel the stretch, you don't have to go beyond that. The moment you feel the stretch, gently move up and down and allow the massaging effect of the movement, move fluid up and down and loosen up the vertebrae. Or gently cross your feet in front, and that works the lower back, and then you get you know, a little more advanced, and anyway, there are a bunch of graduated movements. Okay, for the hips, thighs, lateral knees, both sides of the knees. Standing on the cellar sizer, I step across side to side, I add a hop to it, and I'm working the hips, the thighs, and the knees. As you get stronger, you can sit down further, or you can go skiing. It's the same burn feeling you would have if you were on the slopes. Now, anybody wanna know how to lose weight quickly? Stop eating. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, okay. There's three natural ways. There's three natural ways to, to lose weight. Diet is one, of course. The second is burning calories faster than we're taking them in, exercise. And third is increasing metabolism. The last two is what I work on. I designed a movement that is so incredibly intense, most, well, I don't know anybody, in 20 seconds isn't gonna feel it. It's really intense. The biggest muscles of the body have the greatest demand for fuel. So we wanna harness the biggest muscles. I'm gonna show you a way you can do it, but you, you, can, you can only do it on a cellar size. It doesn't work any other way. It was so intense when I was teaching it, I had women write me that they'd gotten rid of their cellulite in as little as two to three weeks. Dr. John Gray, a friend of mine, actually, told me he saw that movie and said, David, that's so intense, it'll grow new capillaries. And I believe he was right. Because what happens with cellulite is simply white adipose tissue, it's fat, that you've lost circulation to. So these fat cells get hard, they push their way through the dermis and they show up as you know, coagulated type fat underneath the skin. We have to increase circulation, but we also have to create a demand for the body to, for fuel. So this is how we do it. Standing on the cellar side, we can hold on to the balance bar, keep our back straight, do not lean forward. Keep our back straight, bend to the knee, and you're gonna run as fast as you can without lifting your feet up off the mat. You won't last 20 seconds without feeling the burn. It's just like this. I guarantee you, I don't care what shape you're in, you're gonna feel it. See, these muscles are gonna eat up the glucose and the sugar is the most readily available energy source first. So when you're done with the first set and you stand there lifting the heels up and down, which by the way, activates the calf muscle, flexes the calf muscle, which helps to feed circulation from the lower extremities back up to the heart. Remember, you're helping to pump with the heart, it makes it easier on the heart. 
and all the other collateral muscles around the heart. So as you're moving up and down, it helps reduce edema, swelling, varicose veins. So as we're lifting, because the weakest area of circulation is in the lower extremities. It's the furthest area from the heart. So we make it easier on the heart every day. We move that circulation. So as we gently bounce up and down, catch our breath again, moving up and down feeds more oxygen, blood flow back to the thighs, priming them for your next set. When I first started teaching, I was teaching, I'd do a trade show like this. And all day long, are you familiar with the Jamba Run? That's what I call it, the Jamba Run. No, I knew they weren't because I invented it. But it was a great lead-in to get people to come over. Well, let me show it to you. Every time I showed it to them, guess what happened to my, <laughs> my metabolism? Shoot up. Metabolism, when you increase it through exercise, doesn't just crash back down when you stop. So it would go up all day long. I'm, I'm taking 10 seconds to show them the Jamba Run. My metabolism never came down. I'd lose so much weight that it would take me a month to try to get it back. I'd lose eight to 10 pounds in a weekend. That's crazy, so I stopped doing them. I went to a doctor at one point because I said, something's wrong. They did a full physical on me. They said, David, you're in great shape. You got the metabolism of a 19-year-old. I said, yeah, but I can't put on any weight. I'm eating two dinners at night, I, which I was, and I can't put on the weight. They said, it's just your metabolism, you're fine. Well, it wasn't, it was the Jamba Run. I backed off of it. It took about a month to get my rear end back again. But for the hips, thighs, knees, skiing, this one, another one is sitting down. We're almost ready to do a demonstration with some of you. Okay, this one here, this is a, this will blow any ab machine out of the water. It really does. Um, sit down, gently bounce something down. It's all being done right here with the stomach muscles. As you get stronger, you can lean back further, lift up one leg. It leverages the weight here in the lower abdomen where everybody wants to work. Or you lift up the other leg. We have women, by the way, this is a great way to help after having babies because it helps to tighten and tone the lower abdomen. When you get stronger, you can bounce a little higher or if you want to take it to the next room, you're going cheek to cheek and you're working the obliques or in and out or up and down. I don't know of any sit-up that'll come close, but it's, uh, that's not the way I do it. This is the way I like to do it. I prefer to do it. Um, okay, one more. I was talking to somebody earlier about singers. Anybody here like to sing? All right. Any radio announcers in here? I do. I teach this. Good. I teach this to people because of how it opens up the bronchial tubes and the lungs substantially. They call it diaphragmatic breathing. Most people only get enough oxygen in their, their lungs to fill the first two-thirds of it. We don't take enough deep breaths, and we don't exercise the lungs unless we're out there doing running, swimming, or other heavy-duty aerobic exercises. And many of us don't have time for that. So I designed a exercise specific for the lungs, and it opens up the bronchial tubes and lungs. But when you first start to do it, they'll be a little wheezy, and they'll be a little sensitive, just as if you went and did long-distance running. You hadn't done it for a long time. But it also, listen to my voice when I'm done, because it also opens up the vocal the voice, and it goes just like this. I'm on the mat the entire time. Can you hear the difference in the voice? I, I, I didn't do anything. I'm just talking. But it literally opens. <laughs> Nobody turned up the volume, right? <laughs> it sure sounds like it. But it opens everything up. So again, if you like to sing, that's going to open that whole um, vocal box and mechanism much more effectively. Okay, I need, do we have anybody who does bodybuilding? Any yoga instructors? Come on up, please. Yoga instructor? All right, come on up. Thank you. All right. Now, the light bulb didn't go on yet. It's about to... Okay. All right. <laughs> What's your name? Santron. What, Sam? Santron. Santron. Nice to meet you, Santron. And Adam. Thank you, Adam. All right. What we're going to do right now is we're going to challenge them in their natural strength and balance. So what I'd like you to do, Santron, Santron, and Adam. 
Take and put your hands in front of you like this. Put your elbows right into your, right there. Perfect. Now bend to the knee, lower your center of balance. That's a horse stance. Hands straight out like that. I Put your thumbs like that so I don't hurt them. Put the thumbs like that. There you go. Okay, Santron, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push down on your hands. I want you to attempt not to move. You can resist me as best as you can. And this is simply gonna illustrate how well they can utilize their strength and how balanced they are right now. Okay, so as I push straight down, you resist. Okay, ready? Good, resist. As I push straight down, that is darn, darn good. Okay, that's like 1%. You, you don't do this, do you? Okay, I'm gonna push harder. Okay, let's do it again. Because you're gonna have to tell them how much stronger you feel in a moment. Okay, ready? Okay, all right. Resist, and I'm pushing really hard and he's kind of sort of coming up on the balls of your feet. Okay, let's do the same thing. Ready? Okay, now you resist as hard as you can. As I push down, <laughs> okay. All right, you, initially you moved your center of balance and took a step, nothing wrong with that. That's what people do to adapt to imbalances. Okay, ready? Okay, I'm gonna try it again. You resist as hard as you can. Try not to move your arms, ready? Put your elbows into your side like that. It gives you more strength, good. Okay, ready? Okay. Resist. Now, as I push straight down, you just came right over. Want to try again? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Resist. Now, as I push straight down, and you're moving your center of balance, just like that. Nothing wrong with that. Come on up on the solar sizer. Now, you're not going to hurt that. Well, you don't have cowboy boots, right? <laughs> no, you're fine. Come on up. Okay. What I want you to do first is take your hands put them up on the trapezius muscles, hold on to these muscles with your fingertips. These are the muscles that help hold up our posture. When these muscles get weak, the shoulders droop. We also get a lot of stress and tension in this area. So holding on to these muscles, I want you to bounce up and down. Just keep going, just like that. Both of you, perfect. Now, can you feel all the weight on the muscle over and over? Yeah, at that height, keep going. That height is like taking five to 10% of your body weight, putting it on top of you. You're doing over 100 of these a minute. But instead of pushing the weight away from gravity over and over, they're increasing the weight of gravity over and over. Watch. Grab the deltoids, the shoulder muscles right there. Squeeze these muscles right in here. Squeeze them with your fingertips. Pass them down. Can you feel them flexing? Is it a little bit or a lot? A lot. Yeah, it is. It's a lot. People that have shoulder problems, this is some of the movements that I teach to help open up the rotator cuff and, and increase circulation between those joints. Okay, now grab the biceps with your fingertips, squeeze the muscle, bounce them down. Can you feel the weight on the muscle? Some, yeah. Okay, <laughs> people say, how do you build up a bicep bouncing on a solar sizer? Bounce, <laughs> that's all you have to do, it's all weight bearing. Those muscles are either gonna eventually flop to the bottom of the mat, they won't, they're gonna get more resistant and stronger to compensate for the weight. Now take your hands, dig them around your waist, dig into the stomach muscles with your fingertips, squeeze those muscles. And can you feel the muscles in there? Feel them flexing? It's too easy. Guys, in one month, my arms were bigger and my wife was saying, are you lifting weights? I said, no, I'm just playing on this thing. In one month, I dropped a belt notch um, and I was just playing on it. I didn't realize the, what this could do initially. They're doing over 100 sit-ups a minute, but at the same time, they're still doing 100 of these minutes. They're doing 100 of these minutes. They're giving themselves a facial, although they don't need them, but the facial muscles have weight on it. So they have to tighten it on. The skin cells are made out of collagen. They become firmer. The internal organs are moving up and down. The connective tissue surrounding them is firming up. Are they favoring one side of the body over the other? So they have imbalances. If they have imbalances in the body, they bounce up and down. If their hips are out of alignment, the hips drop. Muscles start to move to support their natural alignment. Watch, let's step down and take the same position. Adam, we're gonna do you first. Watch. Okay, and you hold just as hard as, just like you did, bend in the knee a little bit. Okay, all right, you're gonna tell us if there's any difference in your strength and balance now. Okay, ready? Okay, <laughs> resist. Yeah, yeah pretty neat. Yeah, put your elbows right into your side. Okay, ready? Resist. Yeah, totally bound. You know, and Tai Chi and yoga and all these martial arts, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to create balance in the body, but they never treat the body as a whole. They're treating it as parts. So they can get close, but they're never going to accomplish what you can accomplish on a cellar sizer. You want to have a better yoga experience? Cellar size first. Do the same thing. You're going to tell us if you notice any difference in your strength. 
You ready? <laughs> okay, resist. <laughs> You're not gonna go. He's not gonna go anywhere, guys. <laughs> you feel the difference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing, guys. It really, if I had weight for them to lift, they would lift more weight the second time. Um, I wanna ask if there's anybody that had any questions. Because it looks like we're gonna have to wrap it up or? Okay, all right. Any questions? Yes. Yes. That's all I sit behind a desk. I'll, you get to the point where you, you build a business and you run the business and the business runs you. I, I do my 10 minutes a day, thank goodness. Thank goodness. Yes. Belly fat. Belly fat? Okay. You're working from the inside out. And the cellar sizer, it, men, same thing. If you want to get rid of your stomach, don't do sit-ups. All you'll do is get frustrated. You'll have strong stomach muscles that nobody can see. You want to burn off the weight, you do this. You want to do repetitions of the Jamba Run. My daughter lost 10 pounds in one month doing it, and I said, back off, because her metabolism soared. Another question. Where can you get it? Is anybody interested? Okay, all right, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> okay, this particular unit, it is, it's really not that expensive, um, not compared to what we put into, into it. The unit is 539. Shipping and handling brings it up to 589. For this program, we're making it 559, and that includes shipping. In addition to that, you get a DVD that explains what it is, why it works, shows you how to use it, shows you what we do in our 10 minute a day routine. You're also going to get the $40 additional DVD that has a personal trainer drop down menu in it. It will show you over 20 different techniques. Everything that I showed today, plus a lot more. The natural facelift is in there. Um, how to tighten and tone skin cells um, as well. That will be included. We're gonna ship out um, Monday. We'll start shipping units. If you are interested, you will see an order form in the back table over here. It says 579, and then you have to add $50 shipping. Cross out the 579, right, 559, that includes the shipping and handling. The $40 DVD will, will come, I mean, we're, we're gonna include, you'll get two DVDs. You'll get the old classic DVD, it's over 20 years old, you'll see me 20 years ago, but it's good information. And then you'll have the more up-to-date version as well. Yes? You can, but not in California. <laughs> You'd have to come in Utah. <laughs> I flew in this morning so I could do the, the demonstration. Yeah, good, good. Um, yes? Oh, if we had a studio around here where you can come and actually. No, but we do have, um, once you get a cellar size, you're adopted into the cellar size family, you can call us up, you can talk to us. If you want something specific, I've got a new app that we're introducing in a month. You will create and customize your own exercise routine or pick from the routines that are already there. Yes? Pardon me? I can't hear. We have a mic. Yes, you can. You can order it online. Um, use the, uh, yeah, if you write happy in the discount code, it'll give you a $25 discount. Any, any, any other questions? Yes? Oh, back issues? Darn. Do we really have to leave? I want to show a couple more routines if there's any chance. Yes. I, yes, you can. You can. You just have to do, you do it more gently. I had a lady. She's on the DVD. She was in a car accident. The, the doctors said, you know, she wasn't expected to live. She did live. She'd been to seven specialists in five years. She was at the T. Harvecker event. Her name was Maggie. David, and David, this is what we can do. I'm yes. going to wrap up the show, and then anybody yeah. that wants to stay with you can stay as you long bet. as you want. Yeah. So what we're going to do is this was our first day of the 2018 Best You Expo. Big round of applause for David Hall. Thank you. Thank nice you. to meet you, my friend. For more information, go to www.thebestyou.co.